If you're new to real estate investing and you've got a small budget to work with, you're going to want to watch today's show. Dolly from Kalamazoo, this is your video. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey folks, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. As always, I'm your host, James Wise. And uh, this is the show on Holton Wise TV where you work with me and my team one-on-one -on -one to accomplish your real estate goals. If you're uh, a frequent viewer of Holton Wise TV, you'll notice I'm not in the Holton Wise TV studio right now. I'm actually at home. I uh, just had another child with my wife and, uh, you know, I'm working from home for a little bit so I can, uh, you know, get things situated over here, help out around the home. And because I do real estate investing, that's totally fine, right? I am able to work wherever I want. That's like what true financial freedom is, right? Being able to, uh, to work when and how it works best for you and your family, right? I don't specifically need to be in one location from nine to five or anything of that nature, right? And that's why a lot of you guys reach out to Holton Wise because we can help you accomplish that same goal, right? And that's what uh, Dolly from Kalamazoo, right? That's your goal. You want to be able to build uh, a real estate business, uh, you know, from abroad, right? You don't necessarily need to physically be on the ground here in Cleveland doing things. And uh, what you did is you purchased uh, a package of videos from the MLS uh, Search and Analysis Show, right? Anybody else, if you're interested in doing that, you go to HoltonWise.com, Property Search for Sale tab, click the MLS Search and Analysis uh, Show, and then you can order packages. We sell them one, one property at a time, all the way up to packs of 10. And uh, Dolly, you're my prime example of why it makes sense to do the multi-packs. I'm very happy that uh, you did a multi-pack because a, a big part of what this show is and a big part of what I do when I work with you guys, yes, I, I go out and I find you properties, but a lot of it is going to be setting expectations or making adjustments to your plan or your expectation, right? You guys order this package and then we send you a questionnaire, right? We try to get all this information out of you, right? We want to know your wants, your goals, your budget, uh, your current plan, what you hope to accomplish, right? All that jazz, right? We send you all that, you send it back to us. And then from there, uh, we try to piece together the best possible real estate plan uh, with what you have. But what you have uh, or what you want to do or what you think you want to do isn't always um, going to work, right? And uh, it makes sense that it wouldn't always work because uh, you guys, you know, you're not from the Cleveland area, right? You don't know that much about the Cleveland market. I'm sure you've done your research and uh, you think it's a, a decent market. But the reason you come to us is because we live here. We do this every single day. We've been doing this for years. We have thousands of tenants. Uh, we have the systems in place, the processes in place, right? We, you know, if you knew, if you knew how to do everything we know how to do or that we can do or that we have the human capital and experience and wherewithal to do, there really wouldn't be a reason for us, right? Uh, you wouldn't need to come to us, right? You just do it without us, right? So that's what we're here for, right? And Dolly, I have to, uh, you know, make some adjustments to your plan. So I'm glad that after this video, uh, we're going to be doing a few more, right? Because uh, it's very much going to be a back and forth process, right? So essentially, before we even get into the property, right? Because I don't even think the property necessarily is that important. What's really important right now is getting you and I on the same page uh, with proper expectations of what you can and cannot actually pull off successfully here in the Cleveland market. Uh, when you came to me, right, you have $30,000 in cash and you'd like to do a bird deal of a duplex, okay? In addition to the $30,000 in cash, you asked me this question. I have accounts at Lowe's, $15,000, Sam's, $15,000, and Home Depot, 15, or I'm sorry, 5,000. So you have $15,000 credit line at Lowe's, $15,000 credit line at Sam's Club, a $5,000 credit line at Lowe's. Can these be used for all the necessary items needed in a renovation? It helps me spread the costs and helps build my business credit profile, uh, et cetera, right? Uh, so in a nutshell, 
yes and no, okay? Here's the thing. Uh, if you're working with Holton Wise as your contractor, no, you can't do that. If you're, if you're working with any major legitimate type of contractor, you're probably not able to do that, right? What you can possibly do, okay, is you can possibly set it up where you build your own team from the ground up. You're essentially building your own business, your own company, and uh, the contractor that you would hire would be more or less an employee, and you'd be paying that person like on an hourly rate type of thing, right? If you were to do something like that, yeah, because you'd be in charge of purchasing the materials and it would essentially be your employee. Uh, working with a professional property management company, a, fe a professional contractor like Holton Wise, uh, no, like logistically, we can't just, you know, let thousands of investors from, you know, everywhere in the world, we can't like logistically allow you to like buy products and like get them shipped. It would be a logistical nightmare. You might buy the wrong products, things of that nature. Like there's no legitimate company that's is going to go through that with you, right? The way we operate, and we have videos on this. I'll put these in the show notes below. Uh, essentially, we're going to give you a bid and that bid is everything. That's labor, that's materials, that's everything. We have processes and systems at place. Uh, we have accounts, distribution accounts. We have stock. Uh, you know, we sell you the product. You got to buy it. You, you buy it from us. And then we get to work, right? We, we have very systemized processes in everything we do. So uh, there's no like company running with systems and processes in place uh, where you could just like insert yourself into that distribution channel and you're out there making moves and we'd have to like talk back to you. It would create more work for us uh, and it would be impossible to run a business like that at scale. So with us, no, cannot use any of that. If you started your own construction company and you were the boss and you had employees, yeah, sure. Theoretically, you could do that. But do I think that you can actually, from where you're at uh, in the investment space, as far as being new, number one, number two, not being located here, number three, not having any construction uh, background, do I think you could successfully pull that off? No, because it's already going to be a risky scenario to try to do out-of-state investing. It's going to add more risk to out-of-state investing if you try to do bird deals. And then it's going to add more risk if you try to start a general contracting business. So in my opinion, I think you'll crash and burn if you do that. I mean, you know, if you want to try it, great. But uh, you'd essentially be starting a real estate business, starting a contracting business in a market where you don't know anybody. And, you know, you'd be essentially hiring employees. Like, do you have the, the talent? Uh, in, in the experience to actually train the employees to work how you need them? Do you understand the checks and balances that need to take place to actually make sure things are, are done for the, the local, the federal, the state building codes? I mean, I, I think it would be a nightmare and it would be beyond optimistic for you to think you could operate that. And then of course you have like Craigslist contractors uh, that you could possibly hire who claim they're contractors and they'll tell you that, yeah, you could work with all that, but like, dude, those aren't really actual legitimate contractors. Those are more like employees, right? They just are calling themselves contractors. So you go back to everything I just said where you're, you're starting your own business. And, uh, you know, at Holden Wise, we give you guys the opportunity to use our, our team and our distribution system and have us handle everything for you. Uh, but every once in a while, we get the investors out there who, uh, you know, think that they could get it done cheaper or they do this or they do that. And they will hire those Craigslist guys. As a, a matter of fact, this just happened like uh, two months ago. This dumb, this dumb son bitch, man. This fucking asshole investor. Uh, this guy's a fucking asshole. Uh, we 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 gave him a bid to do his roof. All right, I don't remember what the cost was, uh, but he's like, ah, it's too expensive. I can get it done cheaper on Craigslist. Blah 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 blah. All right, cool, bro. No problem. It's your property. Uh, so he hires some fucking asshole off a of Craigslist and this guy like gives him a bid, which is like 50% of our bid. Right. And our, our roofing prices, uh, we're like middle of the road, right? We're not the cheapest people in the world. We're not the most expensive people in the world, but we're just like middle of the road, right? Any legitimate roofing company, uh, charges about what we charge, right? We're very cognizant of, uh, our construction pricing, right? So <clears throat> he gets this bid from this Craigslist asshole, and uh, they start working on this thing and uh, they go there one day and they completely tear everything off, tear the whole roof off. And then uh, they go home for the day. They don't finish uh, the roof that day. It's like a two or three day job. Okay. So they tear this whole roof off and it starts raining that night, like pouring. But guess what? 
these fucking assholes are such hacks. They never tarped the roof before they left the job site. So there's an actual tenant living there, no goddamn roof, and it's fucking pouring. So thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars uh, of water damage all happened to you know, the property, everything the tenant owned, and guess who had to foot all of that, right? That asshole investor who thought, uh, you know, he could, uh, you know, operate with some Craigslist Yahoo who's given bids that are 50% of what every legitimate uh, contractor out there is charging, right? So, you know, buyer beware, man, caveat emptor, however you say that. So, uh, yeah, just, you know, I'm not going to tell you what to do or what not to do if you want to start your own construction business and, and, and act as the boss and use your accounts, uh, more to, more power to you, but, um, take everything I just said, uh, cause that's what happens to people, right? It's, you know, you're starting a business, right? Don't try to start two, three businesses that you have no experience in all at the same time, especially when you're, you're very undercapitalized, right? So that's my take on that. Are you a lender? If so, Holton Wise is looking to partner with you. If you're licensed in all 50 states, go to HoltonWise.com. Click the digital media tab to advertise on Holton Wise TV today. And then, uh, which, yeah, I mean, you being undercapitalized, right? I guess I haven't really touched on that, but that, that's what leads me to my next point, which is your capitalization, right? So without being able to use the 15 from Lowe's, the 15 from Sam's and the five from Home Depot, you only have $30,000, right? That is not a lot of money. And it's, it's not enough money to do what you want to do, right? And uh, that's, you know, that's what goes back to the theme uh, of today's show, right? I have to, you know, adjust your expectations because uh, you cannot do a bird deal in Cleveland uh, with $30,000 on a duplex. It, it's just not going to happen, okay? You, you don't have enough money, right? I, I need you to have like, you know, you should really have about $100,000 to play with. If you have $100,000, we can accomplish that goal for you, right? But with your budget of $30,000, that's just not going to happen, which leads me to the property that I did find for you. You didn't say anything about single family homes, but based upon the amount of money that you have, this is as close to your original goals as we could come. 1210 Middle Avenue, Elyria, 44035. This was listed six days ago for $39,900. And I love uh, seeing listings like this because it's just a dog shit listing, really, is what it is. It's just a crummy little house and the agent put absolutely no effort into it whatsoever, right? All they've given us uh, it's just this crummy picture of the front yard. They've taken no steps to clean anything up, and uh, it's not even a good picture, right? <laughs> you can barely see the house. It's just like, what the fuck, dude? Like, that's, you know, <laughs> like, they're just putting in literally uh, zero effort, okay? So zero effort has gone into this listing, but that's good for you, right? It's got a tenant in there. The tenant is a relative of the owner, and that tenant is paying $750 a month, which would bring in approximately $9,000 a year. Here is the cool thing about this deal. This can be what I like to call a slow motion burr or a delayed burr. We've already established that you do not have enough money today uh, to burr a multifamily. You need about $100,000. Can't do that. But uh, you could possibly burst single families, uh, but you still need more money, right? You probably need at least like 65,000 to, to successfully pull that off. So you can't even burst singles with 30K, but what you can do is possibly do a slow motion burn on this one, right? So I targeted this listing, crappy listing, no effort put into it whatsoever. We have a tenant paying below market rent. They're a friend of the owner, right? They're paying 750. The actual market rent of this particular property should be $1,000. But by the time we got it to $1,000, I'm sure we'd have to put in 25 k right? Because, you know, just based on the crappy ass outside picture, I'm sure we have to drop 20 k in cosmetics on the inside. And then, you know, I got a 5 k buffer for maybe having to do the roof, the furnace, or the hot water tank. Not all of them, but some of them, right? Uh, so roughly 25 to 30 K is, you know, probably what we would need to put into it, uh, to get us like a thousand dollar a month section eight tenant after a nice 25 to 30 K reno, 
uh, you'd be able to sell this thing or get it to appraise rather uh, for approximately $75,000. So that could be a burr down the road, but you don't have an additional 25 to 30K right now, which is why I think this property is a perfect first investment for you. Because again, that tenant, they're still paying that 750, right? And the listing's shitty. So because of the listing being crappy, I feel like not a lot of buyers are going to notice the value here, notice what's actually uh, possible down the road. So I'd like to see you pick that up for $30,000. If the seller needs more than $30,000 uh, and you can't come up with it, I guess, you know, we'll just have to wait on your next uh, property till you acquire a little bit more money. But maybe you could find a little bit more money because, you know, if you paid like, you know, 35, 36,000 for this, it'd still be a pretty damn good deal. But let's just hope that we can get it for you at 30,000 because no one else is paying attention to this listing, right? If we do that, you just sit on it. You don't do anything. You just continue to collect that rent and you save your money. So when it eventually does go vacant, at that point, you'll have enough money to have Holton Wise go in and do that renovation for you. Then we'll be able to get you that $1,000 a month tenant. Then we'll be able to get it to appraise for $75,000. Then we'll be able to pull that money back and that'll be your bird deal, right? But you need time to save your money. And luckily this tenant's already living there. So let's collect that rent from the tenant as far as how that would all look out, right? 750 comes in and then we've got the estimated uh, expenses. And that leads me to another question that you would ask me, right? Let me uh, read this. You said, when you show an example of a rental breakdown, you list 5% or $50 for repairs, vacancy, and capital expenditures. I'm presuming this is just an in principle illustration. You don't actually keep these monies. The rental funds are sent to me monthly, less your 10% fee and maybe less taxes, correct? Uh, more or less, yeah, you're, you're barking up pretty much the right tree. Let me clarify, okay? So looking at the chart, 750 comes in, okay? You know, theoretically, 750 comes in every month. Now, we have variable expenses, which are repairs and maintenance, vacancy and non-payment, and capital expenditures. That is all money that's still going to get sent to you in your owner distributions, right? We are not withholding 37 every month for repairs. We are not withholding 37 for vacancy and non-payment. We are not withholding 37 for capital expenditures. What that is, is that is me illustrating to you that even though that money is coming to you, being sent to you by Holton Wise every single month, I do not want you to consider that to be profit. That would be disingenuous of me. Why? Because I know that eventually you're going to have to do a turnover. When you do a turnover, it's going to be a few thousand dollars, guys. That's why the fact that this particular property, I haven't seen the inside, but I don't care because there's no scenario where that crummy ass looking house from the outside, that tenant moves out, and then you get to just move a new tenant in there without doing anything. Now, dude, you're going to be dropping 25, 30K. There's no way you're not. Now, in between all the turnovers, though, after we do a nice turnover with like new kitchen fixtures and new bath fixtures, because that was included in like what I'd like to see happen to this house. Uh, but you can look at the outside of this house and know they don't have like brand new kitchen and bath fixtures, guys. And that's the other thing too. Uh, you know, I talked to a lot of sellers, a lot of people in real estate all day, every day, obviously. And I'll ask them like, oh, when was the last time the kitchen was updated? They're like, oh, it's a new kitchen. I'm like, okay, great. What does that mean though? When was it updated? And they're like, oh, 2005. Motherfucker, 2005, that's 15 years ago, y'all. That's not a new kitchen, dude. That's a kitchen that needs updating, right? Look at it this way. If I asked you how old your computer was and your computer is from 2005, would you tell me it's a new computer? No, you'd be like, this is a motherfucking dinosaur, right? Think of your kitchens and your baths the same way, right? So I know there's going to be an old kitchen, right? So will we have to drop 15, 20K every turnover? No, not at all. But we're going to definitely be dropping a couple grand, right? Because we're probably going to have to repaint all the walls every single time. We're going to have to clean it all up. And if we had carpet, we'd probably be replacing carpet. But typically what my team does is we pull carpet, uh, and we buff hardwood floors because those last in between tenants. We put a nice epoxy coating over them. Uh, so if animals are peeing on them, it just beads up, doesn't sink into the wood and cause odor, right? So the 37 for repairs and maintenance, that's knowing that whenever tenants, that's you preparing for the fact that whenever tenants move out, you're going to probably spend another couple grand to get the unit turned. Vacancy and non-payment, that is you preparing for the fact that when those turnovers happen, you ain't going to collect rent while we're fixing it, number one. And then number two, it's real estate. Eventually, you're going to have to evict tenants. Tenants do not pay rent 100% of the time. That is the life of a real estate investor, guys. If you want to invest in real estate, at some point, some tenant will steal from you and you will need to evict them. 
welcome to the party. If you are not comfortable with that, shut the video off and look at some other type of investing because there ain't no real estate investor out there who's going to be able to go their whole career without evicting some some bitches, right? That's just not how this game works, okay? And then lastly, capital expenditures. The roof, okay? Roofs last approximately 30 years here in the Cleveland market. This roof is probably like a $5,000 roof. Every 30 years or so, you need to know that you're going to be spending five grand to put a roof on it, right? So I make you save for that because we're knowing that's going to happen. Furnaces, they last about 30 years and they cost three Gs. Hot water tanks, they last about 15 years and they cost one G. And these are costs, by the way, these include materials and labor, okay? So it's, it's you planning for these things, right? Because if, if I didn't, you know, put those on there, you would think that the returns are going to be huge, so high, and you get all excited, and then, boom, we hit you with that big-ass bill, and you're just like, oh, what the hell, man? You weren't expecting it, right? So we're all about transparency here. So that's what those are. Taxes, uh, we do not handle your taxes. You'll have to handle your taxes. You want to pay your taxes. You'll pay your taxes actually twice a year. You pay them every six months, right? But we give you the cost, right? We break it down for you. It's going to be 101 bucks a month, right? And then insurance, depending on how you set your insurance up, which by the way, we have uh, an insurance office for you guys. So in the show notes below, uh, anybody who's watching this, uh, doesn't matter where your rentals are, we are actually licensed to insure properties coast to coast. Uh, we get you guys landlord policies so we can lower your premiums, right? Uh, so you could do, you could set the insurance up where you pay the insurance company monthly. You could also set up where you pay once a year. It's, it's how you want to do that. Water sewer, that's billed monthly from the water and sewer company, okay? And then property management, uh, we bill you monthly as well, right? So th that's, I hope that explains uh, everything for you on exactly how that works. And if I haven't clarified it specifically, uh, if you still have any other questions, please, uh, in the email, after we send you this email with this video, please give me all your additional questions. And uh, I want to just continue hammering out your questions and really putting a plan together that works for you, right? So with all that said, though, 750 comes in. On average, I anticipate you making an average net return on your investment. Net operating income should be an average of 328 a month or 3936 a year. With a $30,000 acquisition price, that's a 13 0.1% return on your money, right? A 13.1 cap out of a cash deal. That is a good return on your money. So what we should be looking at doing while you only got 30 grand, buying this property in cash for 30 grand should be our target. Having you collect that money. So theoretically, you're saving approximately $4,000 a year in income from this property, plus income from your other sources until you have a big surplus of money and then if that coincides with the same time this tenant naturally turns over, naturally moves out, then boom, we're going in. We're going to do that twenty-five dollars to $30,000 renovation. And then we're going to get $1,000 a month Section 8 tenant into this property. And then we're going to bring a lender in the game and we're going to refinance it out. Hopefully they appraise the property for what I think they'll appraise it for, which is going to be seventy-five dollars which should be great because I only anticipate you being into the property around sixty dollars and then we're going to get a ton of money back. And that's when we can move on to the second investment. So, Dolly, if this new plan that I've laid out for you, this more practical plan with what's available in the Cleveland market makes sense to you, reply to this private link. Uh, let my team know what you want to do. We'll write up the offer for you and we'll get the ball rolling. If it doesn't, uh, if you're not feeling it, right, it's not close enough with, to what you originally wanted to do, give me your feedback. Let us know where you want to take things from here. You have other videos. We're banking those videos for you for future use. They do not expire. So if you don't want to move forward on this one and you just want to hold off on investing until you've saved up enough money uh, to do your original plan of doing uh, traditional bird deals on duplexes, that's totally fine. We will bank those properties for you in our system until you're ready. If it takes you 12 months, 18 months, 36 months to save up enough money, that's fine. They'll still be here ready for you uh, to utilize. You'll just shoot us an email and then we'll get started working for you again. It is up to you to work at your pace. We're not going to be badgering you like, yo, you want to do a deal? You want to do a deal? No, no, no. That's not how we do things, right? We're always going to be here doing deals, right? Holton Wise, we got the biggest portfolio in the Cleveland market. We ain't going anywhere, right? We got over 60 employees. Uh, we got this whole well-oiled machine, right? 
We're running a portfolio valued well over $50 million. Homewise isn't going anywhere. We'll be here renovating homes, selling homes, doing investor uh, videos on Holton Wise TV whenever you need us. So it's all about you and your timetable and when it's going to make sense for you. So just let me know which way you want to go. And again, everybody else, if you like what I did for Dolly today and you are interested in working with our team in the same way, uh, the place you want to start is on HoltonWise.com, the property search for sale tab, the MLS search analysis show, order yourself an analysis or what I believe is the best, smartest product, a package of analysis like Dolly did, because I can then provide you with deals, infrastructure, and some coaching uh, and some consultation, right? Because it all starts with investment, or it all starts with education, right? When you're doing investing, guys, it all starts with the education, and I can really help you guys see what's out there in the market and put together a personalized plan of attack that's best for you and the resources you have available. That's it. That's all I've got for today's show. Thank you to everybody who stuck around till the end. As always, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys, put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. U.S. REIB is a full-service turnkey provider offering investors the opportunity to purchase single-family and multifamily investment properties in Cincinnati, Ohio, Dayton, Ohio, and Kansas City, Missouri. The purchase process is seamless. From reserving a property to obtaining financing, inspections, and insurance referrals, U.S. REAP has a dedicated team in place to manage the process from start to finish. In addition, U.S. REAP is also directly integrated with its own private placement fund for accredited investors. The fund seeks to raise $10 million to capitalize on the repositioning of distressed single-family and multifamily real estate. Rent Tech Direct provides you with an easy to use yet robust platform for managing your properties, complete with its built in reporting and accounting system that can be customized to fit your business. For property managers, you get advanced features like simplified owner distributions, automated management and placement fees, an owner portal, plus the software is certified for trust accounting. All this comes backed by the highest rated customer support team in the industry. Certified by third parties and ranked number one by our clients year over year, you get unlimited free access to our U.S.-based support team by phone, email, and chat, who will help you getting started or anywhere along the way. Good day, everyone. It's Angela Ramora here, your favorite Australian and the founder and owner of Ohio Cashflow. Over the last five years, Ohio Cashflow has established itself as the most reputable turnkey real estate investment company in the country. We offer solid B-class properties in Toledo, Ohio. We work and live in the same areas that we sell in. So when we sell your property, your tenants become our neighbors. We only take on a handful of investors every month. So for your chance to work with one of the best in the business, please fill out our investor application form, which you can find in the video notes below. Thanks for listening. And as we say down under, I'll catch you later, mate. Is that it? Yeah, we're done. All right, cool. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content, including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from health. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.